Have you ever seen Major League or Bull Durham? It was exactly like that. I'm going to tell you what life was like in the Arena Football League when I first came into the league. It's a tale of three different teams and three different stories, and it's coming up right now. Hit it. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Elite Athletes TV. I'm Mike Pulaski, quarterbacks coach here, 11-year pro, and a world champion in the Arena Football League. And today I want to tell you about my story about playing in the Arena Football League. Whenever I tell people that I played in four leagues, seven teams over 11 years, and I tell them that I played in the Arena Football League, they ask, well, did you play with Kurt Warner? Well, yes, I played against Kurt Warner, and actually Kurt and I were both rookies coming in the same season, but I didn't play with him. He played in Iowa. I, at that time, I played in Miami and then ended up playing in Albany eventually. But I played for three different teams in the league at the time. And if you've ever seen Bull Durham or Major League, my experience in the Arena Football League was a lot like that. And I know that's Hollywood, and I know it's farcical. But a lot of the stuff that went on in the game while I was there was very much like those movies made it out to be in that you know in the Durham Bulls in that minor league system. I started off playing with the Miami Hooters, and I was looking for my next job in football. I played in Tampa in the NFL, 92, camp in 93, played in the CFL in 94, went to camp with Baltimore, 95, uh, played for the Shreveport Pirates. But that 95 year, I was getting calls from uh, arena football teams, and I didn't know anything about the league. I had seen it when I was down in Tampa. One of the ladies who worked in our office was actually Jay Gruden's wife, Sherry. Uh, And she was really efficient, really good, super nice. And so I kind of watched it because Jay was playing at the time. And so at that time in the Arena Football League, they were wearing the Zubas pants. And it was kind of flashy and it was indoor. And it didn't have a lot of exposure. But the Tampa Bay team was really well thought of, really well followed. And so didn't have a good or bad experience with the Arena Football League. But in 95, I got a call from a guy that I knew when I was playing in Tampa, a guy by the name of Bob Huco, and he had become the GM down in Miami. Uh, And he asked me to come down and play arena football down there, and I really didn't know anything about the league. So then immediately after that, I got a call from the Orlando Predators and kind of started a bidding war back between these two. And as a guy who had been in several camps, a couple different teams, been cut a couple different times, It was kind of refreshing to actually be the wanted commodity out there. And so I took a trip down to Miami, and I was at the time 24, 25 years old. And they took me around to see South Beach, and they took me around to all the big restaurants. John Forcade was the head coach at the time, actually. And kind of showed me the glitz and glamour and showed me around and made me a really nice contract offer, actually pretty close to what I was making in the NFL as a rookie. Then I went up to Orlando, and they made me a nice contract offer. So I had to choose between the two. Well, because I had known Bob Huco, I chose Miami. And at the time, I was going for that bright, shiny object, right? South Beach, Miami, a little bit more money. But I hadn't seen a lot about the football program, hadn't seen the offices. But I I knew and therefore trusted a little bit Bob. When I got down to Miami and uh, John Forcade, head coach, got into camp, our first day of practice, we were literally practicing on a sandlot of a high school football, it wasn't even football, a high school parking lot. We were just off the parking lot on this high school grass field. Uh, there were no boundaries, no lines, no walls. The Arena Football League, if you haven't seen it, it's played indoors, 28 yards wide, 50 yards long, eight yard end zones. And it's there's definite boundaries there. There's walls, there's end zone nets. And so we had nothing simulating the field at all. So as a quarterback trying to understand this game and trying to understand the Arena Football League, I had no marks to go by. I had no reference in terms of what the field was going to be like. But they had me out there trying to play the position. On top of that, we didn't have film. There was nobody there to film practices. This is the first time in my football career since high school that – they didn't have somebody there to film practices. Film study, in terms of what you're doing, is really important to be able to correct mistakes, to get on the same page so everybody is understanding what's going on. 
and there was nobody there filming practice. Uh, we didn't even have team meetings. And so literally I was down there, I think three, three months total. And in that time we had a meeting when everybody came in. And then at one point there was a revolt on the team because they were keeping the team in a hotel, no kitchens and expecting them to go out for their meals on every meal. And so all these guys that weren't making a ton of money to begin with were burning their paychecks, going out, eating in restaurants in South Florida. And so those were really the only two meetings. And so the first time I played in Miami arena, I'll tell you this funny story. I'm coming out on the field and there's a guy in the stands. I don't know him, but he is yelling at me, Pulaski, you suck. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, what a way to get welcomed into your new stadium. I haven't thrown a pass for the Miami Hooters. And here I am getting yelled at by my hometown fans at home by people who don't even know me, probably have never seen me play. So that said, uh, we went out and played. And it turns out that the Miami Hooters was the worst team in the history of organized football. And it has everything to do with management. No matter what level of football you're playing at, the team, the character of a team, everything is all about management. That team was horribly managed. Um, the whole time I was there, they were actually talking about trying to get a former player who had been three-striked out of the NFL for substance abuse. Um, and they were trying to find him. He was homeless. They were trying to find him to bring him back to play for the team. There were stories of guys on different teams who had had substance abuse issues selling team vans while they were playing. And so when you think about crazy sports stories, the arena football league in that era was one of them. Guys who were veterans of the league were only partially joking when they would tell you, as soon as you get your paycheck, run down and cash it because you don't know if it's going to bounce or not. You want to be the first guy there. And so that team went on to infamy in the league. It was, I think one in 13 that year. Wasn't a very good football team about game. 10, I believe it was, um, we play Tampa up in their place. Now, this is when Jay Gruden was the quarterback for Tampa. They were really good. They won a bunch of championships, and they built it all on defense. And so they could get after the passer. And when we went up there to go play Tampa, I never really got comfortable in the position playing with Miami because we had a constantly rotating lineup. We had constantly rotating receivers. Um, John Forcade was a former player, uh, but he wasn't for teaching a new quarterback. He wasn't the right fit for me. Let's just put it that way. And so when we get up to Tampa, I literally in that game got hit 32 times, but I only threw 27 passes. And there was a guy by the name of Ivan Caesar who I'd played with in the CFL in 1994. And at one point Ivan had sacked me twice and he kept getting back there and I kept throwing the football away. And he kept telling me, hey, man, you got to hold on to it so I can get my sack bonus. And so all these guys were trying to rack up their sack bonuses, and they got a lot of them that night versus us. So anyway, after that game, they decided that it was my fault, and they released me, um, which was a blessing for me because it saved my body. And I ended up with the San Jose Sabercats. Now, the San Jose Sabercats in 1995 had just started off as a franchise, and it was it was managed really well in that Terry Malley, a lifelong football family from the Malley family, Santa Clara University, um, was the general manager there. And Terry is really good about football. He's really good about people. He's really good about managing a program. But it was their first year in the league. And so as a startup, they had that general sense of trying to get things going. You know, the, the locker rooms were nice in the field where the facility where they had the team was nice, way nicer than what it was in Miami. And almost as nice as anything that there was in the league at that point. They didn't have their own turf field yet, but they did have their own football field and they did have it sectioned off and marked off for an arena football field. I got there. Tony Kimbrough was a starting quarterback. Todd Shell was the head coach. But the benefit for me was they had a quarterback coach in Tom Porras, also known as a singing quarterback. You can look him up who actually played in the league, understood the league, understood the reads. And in talking with him and in getting to watch the game, rather than being thrown into it and having to play, I got to understand the reads, the keys, 
what's expected of a quarterback, how you can work the league, how you can work DBs. And so it was a great educational experience for me. That final, I, I didn't play in any games for San Jose until their first playoff game, playing in Orlando. And Tony Kimbrough, the quarterback ahead of me, got injured. And I was put in to play the second half and had a really successful second half. I knew I could play the game right then. And I thought, hmm, this is great. At the end of that season, I, after having that experience in Miami, having to come back out to San Jose, wasn't a great experience for me as a player. I was really dealing with, do I keep playing? Do I go back to school, finish law school? What do I do? And so I had decided I was going to go to go back to law school and finish that up and just move on with my career. But I wanted to make some money in the summer before I started going back to school. So that next summer, I went and played again. And I told my agent at the time, I just want you to put me somewhere where I can back up. I don't want to end up in a Miami situation. I don't want to get beat to death. I just want to finish out my football career on a nice note, back somebody up, you know, make some money, and then go back to school. Well, I ended up in Albany in the Arena League. And they had a quarterback by the name of Mike Perez who was really good. And they were bringing me in as a backup quarterback. And so right away, getting into that system, really good head coach of Mike Hoensey, our offensive line coach, Mike Daly, was a really good coach. I could see right away the organization of a team that had been established for a while, good management in the coaching staff, uh, excellent practice management, not the greatest facilities in the world. We traveled to three or four different places, and we did that the whole time I was there. But they managed it like a football team, and they treated players like professionals. And so that was huge for me as a player to get to see that. Now, I still had the same plan all the way through the season. I was going to just finish out my career and move on. But I fell in love with Mike Daly, our head coach, while I was back there. And so as a result... At the end of the season, I told Coach Daly when it was all kind of said and done, I said, I, you know, I would play for you anywhere. Just a great man to this day, still one of my favorite all-time coaches, if not my favorite all-time coach, just a, a fantastic human being. In the offseason, there was a new expansion team in Anaheim, and they hired Mike Hohensey to come out and coach that team. So our head coach got picked up there. Mike Daly got picked up to be the head coach in Albany, and I don't know if I was his first call, but I was one of his very first calls to ask me to come back and be the starter in Albany that next year. And so now I had to weigh, do I finish going back to school? Do I go to Albany? And in the end, we came to a number that we could agree on, but getting to play for Mike Daly and to finish as a starter was important to me. And so I went back to the Arena Football League, played back in Albany as a starter that year in 1997, and absolutely fell in love with the game. Had teammates that I fell in love with, guys like Mark Valdo, Kyle Moore Brown, Greg Hopkins. I'm going to miss a whole bunch of dudes, Derek Stingley, uh, that were just fantastic dudes. And so we started to form this bond and this chemistry in that locker room with that team. And I knew that Coach Daly was a high, high character guy. And so as a result, the team that he was building was a high, high character team. That made it worthwhile to me as a player to come back into that locker room, be part of that team. I had a great year that year, um, you know, threw a bunch of touchdowns, a bunch of yards. We were coming from behind in a lot of games, and so we were always throwing the ball. That league was famous for throwing the ball anyway. But had a really successful year in terms of numbers. We didn't win. We didn't go to the playoffs, but but – we were there. We were on the verge in almost every game. Next year, 98, decided to come back, play for Coach D again, play with that team again, and the team got better. Nucleus got better. And we went to the playoffs that year. We were a better football team, and you could see the momentum building, how much better we were getting. 1999 comes, and Coach D had put together a very high-character team, very good football players. All the pieces were in place. Everybody was there to make it happen. And so that team in 1999 went out and worked their butts off. 
played hard, worked hard, played together, um, both on the field and when we were off the field as well. So that team really liked each other and built some amazing chemistry. Went on, I think we were 13-3 and that year, but went on to win the Arena Bowl championship. And so people ask me when I look back over my career, there were injuries or everything else, would you do it all over again? And I said, yeah, I'd probably try to skip the Miami Hooters, but I would definitely do it over again to play in the Arena Football League because it was incredibly rewarding. And because the teams were so close that it was a two-way game back then. So you had two offensive specialists. And on offense for us, it was me, obviously as the quarterback, and Eddie Brown, who was Antonio Brown's father. But Eddie was voted the greatest player in the history of arena football. He was a phenomenal receiver in that league. And then on defense, we had Derek Stingley and Evan Lavasek that, le- that year. And so the whole team played both sides of the ball. There was no offense, defense. Everybody was one unit. And as a result, it was a fantastic locker room. And so in terms of dudes that I've ever played with, maybe the highest character team in terms of guys that I knew, that I know that today, if I were to call them up today, they'd have my back. And so that was a super cool thing to be a part of. Yeah, it was cool to be there when Kurt was there. Kurt was great. We knew each other then. You know, when Jay was there, Jay and I were rivals. Jay was one hell of a football player. Jay Gruden was one hell of a football player. Uh, he, he was just tough, tough, tough. Um, and in, in that system that he played in, in Tampa, he had to be because they were all about defense first. And so Jay was just as tough as they come at the position. Uh, just kept getting hit, kept getting up, kept throwing touchdowns. And so it was a cool league to be a part of. Some really great athletes in that league that, uh, you know, given a shot somewhere else would have had success at, at, at the next level but just great to be a part of. And so when people ask me about my arena football league experience, yes, it was like Bull Durham, and yes, it was like Major League in a lot of ways, but it was also some of my favorite time playing football. I loved it, went on to play in the XFL after that, but I will always remember my time in Albany in the Arena Football League fondly, and especially playing for Coach D and playing with those guys, it made it pretty special. I appreciate you watching. Please subscribe to the channel. Remember... As a quarterback, trying to give you stories that help you, trying to give you plays that help you. We draw plays, we review film. But if you like what we're doing, comment down below. Give me a thumbs up if you love playing football. Give me a thumbs up if you love the game. If you're a coach and you want to hear more stories, just ask for more stories. I got a ton of them over the course of my career. But I appreciate you watching, and I will talk to you next time. I'm Mike Pulaski. It's Elite Athletes TV, and this was The Film Room.